Celebs can't quit Donald Trump. Roll it. He thought about the possibility he might use the power of the federal government against you personally? Yeah, I have, but I just, I'm comforted in the fact that he's coming after you first. Clooney should get out of politics and go back to television. I, you know, I will if he does. I don't hate the guy. I hate the people who vote for him. I think they're stupid. I don't think, I, I do. I'll be honest with you. I have no respect for you. You could be president. Do you ever think about anything like that? No. Really, never? No. Why? I wouldn't make a good president. You don't think you'd be good? I wouldn't really pass any of the things that you have to pass to, but I guess Trump did it. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> you, you, would have, you would be a Boy Scout by the Yeah, past. yeah. Well, that didn't age well for either of them. <laughs> Whoops. So, Mr. Trump, the thing that I, I think there's a, th my theory is that famous people don't like it when their fame is put in proper perspective when it's dwarfed by somebody with more fame. So they prefer to be on the, the hierarchy on the, of fame. They want to be on top. I notice a lot of these guys, that's, it's an, an emotional response to the fact that you're bigger, more well-known. Does that make sense? Well, I watch, I know some of them. And uh, like Howard, I was on Howard Stern show as much as anybody. And yeah. he, he was great at that time. And <laughs> then he uh, went woke. Yeah. And since he's gone woke, his ratings have gone down the tubes. And he sort of went anti-Trump for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was on his show a lot. Yeah. In fact, he has a best of. Did you ever see the best of? Best of Howard Stern? I don't want to promote it necessarily. <laughs> but <laughs> and, and, and I was there for just about yeah. all of them, the best of. We had good shows. It was good. But he's changed. And, you know, he doesn't do the ratings anymore. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have to. He's almost finished. Kat, do you remember Howard Stern? <laughs> no, but I was. But you're. You've been on every show. I mean, you've been I on TV been. a lot. A lot of shows. I mean, would you rule out? I'm saying. I'm not saying now, but would you, would you ever rule out doing reality TV again? Like, I, what about I hosting think, Love Island? I think so you know, I, I had. <laughs> I had uh, The Apprentice for 12 years. Oh, 14, I know. 14 seasons, but 12 years, a lot of time. They wanted to renew me for five years. They were all set to do it, and I didn't want to do it. I wanted to run for... I said I wanted to run for president. Mark Burnett, who's a great guy, and, you know, the producer and all. And all of the people from NBC, everybody came up to see me to talk me out of running. They said, it's not possible to win. Nobody's ever done that. I mean, and nobody ever gives up primetime show. It was a big <laughs> hit. And they wanted to do a five-year extension. And I said, no, that's actually when I knew I was going to do it. And, uh, I mean, I love doing The Apprentice. It was so successful. Uh, the big question is, did it make a difference? Would I have been president? You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. say uh, they created this guy from The Apprentice, and I don't know if that's true because they chose me because of the, you know, the I success. I think it was your chemistry with Brett Michaels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brett Michaels was a character. We had great characters. Yes. Yeah. And we learned a lot about, I mean, we had Dennis Rodman was great. Oh, he was fantastic. And uh, we, had, we had tremendous characters on the show. We had a lot of, I mean, everybody was helped, basically, by being on The Apprentice. But I just wanted to do it. I saw what was happening with the country. The country was going bad. And now what they've done with the border and the wall and the whole thing, I could have built an extra 200 miles. I built much more than I said I was going to build, and it worked. I had the Mexican government giving us 28,000 troops. We had so many Mexican troops, they had no choice. They had to. Otherwise, I said, I'm going to put tariffs on your cars that you stole from. You know, they stole 32% yes. of our car industry, okay? You know, which is not, we'll get it back. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I really felt I wanted to do it because we can make our country. The Make America Great Again is such a great MAGA, is such a great uh, tag. And I watched Biden where... He was very angry at MAGA. He said, we've got to stop MAGA. And I'm saying, it's Make America Great Again. Yes. You know, it sort of, sort of, it sort of doesn't work so well, right? Make America Great Again. And that's what we'll do. If you think of it, we have 21, I believe it's 21. They say 16, but what difference? I mean, it's a lot of people, more people than any country could sustain. 21 million people, many come out of jails and prisons, slight difference between one being a little bit more harsh. Uh, they come out of mental institutions and insane asylums. They come out of terrorist schools. They come literally out of schools, but they're terrorists. We have people coming from gangs, the worst gangs in the world, MS-13, considered the meanest gang. They cut people up. They don't want to use guns. They attacked two young 16-year-old beautiful girls walking to school. They cut them up with a knife. They didn't want to shoot them because it wasn't painful. They both died. Mm. 
And these people are coming out into our country. And now you look at what's happening in, like, Aurora mm -hmm. in Colorado. Venezuela, Venezuelan gangs are taking over the real estate. They're becoming real estate developers. And they have... Do they get little cards? Uh, they have whatever they want. You know, like a little real estate card? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, Mr. President. They have li their little card is a bullet. Yes! <laughs> Mr. President, can I ask you a question? With talking about the border, not just all the young military-aged men that are coming across right, this country, right. the fentanyl that's coming across right. this country. It's terrible. If you were an officer, would you consider taking importation of fentanyl as a terrorist act? Because if you count it under terrorism, then our Department of Defense can get involved. We can give our law enforcement a break. Correct. Well, and you can even go further than that. Yeah, I mean, you could send pictures of their mansions to certain general <laughs> individuals <laughs> in Mexico. And by the way, these are really, these are really rich people. These are the cartel people. These are really rich. Look, uh, we can play games, and we can be nice, and we can be smart. Uh, you're never going to... I set up blue ribbon committees. Friends of mine, oh, could I get on a committee? They didn't know the first thing about it. They don't know about El Chapo. They don't know about... These are very smart, hardened people. And, you know, I'm setting up a blue ribbon committee with socialites from New York and California. <laughs> It's ridiculous. And they don't even want to talk about it. They talk about it for two minutes, then they start talking about society. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only way you're going to stop this is the death penalty for drug dealers. I don't know if this country is ready for it, but if you think about it, each drug dealer, on average, kills 500 people. On average, mm -hmm. he or she, drug dealer, kills five... I know so many families who, who have lost a son or a daughter, or parents even, to fentanyl. And I had a deal worked out with China, with President Xi directly, that he was going to give. You know, China has the death penalty. I said to him, do you have a drug problem? When I first met him, he looked at me like, what a stupid question. Exactly. He said, uh, no, 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 no drug problem. I said, well, what do you do? Death penalty. Immediate death penalty. And I said, hmm, that sounds... He said, without it, I talked to him a lot about it. He said, without it, you know, China was a a drug-loaded country years ago. Other countries, much smaller, would take it over mm -hmm. because they were all... Wasted. ...drugged out with the opium and the poppy. Mm -hmm. And they had a big problem. But they uh, execute drug dealers. They have absolutely no drug problem. Singapore has no drug problem. And it's not nice to talk about, but it's the only way you're going to solve the problem. You're never going to have... Now, we got it down to great numbers, the lowest numbers, but uh, the wall helped. A lot of things helped. But in terms of a drug, getting a drug-free country, you can't have that unless you have the death penalty for the, uh, the dealers. All right. We got to take a break. Take it as a maybe on Love Island. <laughs> 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 All right. Up next, media tools. Think Kamala rules. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.